On this week's show, we discuss should your salon be open on Sundays and Mondays or not. Also, do I like metal music or punk music better? And, uh, what else? How to make money on your YouTube videos and why is there so much random stuff on Facebook groups? This and more, let's get the show started. Hey guys, welcome to the Matt Beck Show. This is episode nine. I feel happy to be back. This is, uh, we took a week off, so sorry about that. We had, did a lot of traveling, had a lot of nightmare traveling uh, last week, so I'm excited to get back to answering your guys' questions. Uh, we have some good ones today. So if you guys want to submit a question to this show, we're all about social media, about business, focusing on the salon industry. So you can post those questions using the hashtag the Matt Beck Show on Instagram or Twitter. So let's get the show started. Here we go. So first question is from Fruit High. <laughs> Not exactly sure what that means. Uh, so Fruit High says, a lot of salons are not open on Sundays and Mondays. What is your thoughts on opening those days? So uh, our salon's open on Sunday. We, we haven't ever been open on Monday. I think the challenge with opening too many days is uh, what, what we have. So let's just break that down. Um, I have four stylists in my salon and plus me. So. Um, I work a few different days a week throughout the week. Uh, we have my staff works five days a week, each of them. I think if you wanted to break people into a four day work week would, would be the only way that you could open seven days a week based on your size. So uh, to, to make the, to, to answer this question, I, I'm going to stumble all over it. Uh, to answer this question, basically you have to look at your size of your business. Uh, we have four chairs, we have four stylists plus me. So we don't really have open chairs. So that would be, if I were to open uh, Sunday and Monday, I'd have to bring in more staff. The problem is the new staff that you get, they're not gonna be working the main days, which are Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So they're not gonna be uh, partaking in the main part of the business. So they're not gonna be making as much money. And I really feel that uh, to have a truly uh, successful team, successful staff, uh, they all need to be making money and be happy in that aspect. So I think if you just bring on people just to be open a couple more days, I don't think you're gonna bring in that much income and uh, you're gonna have some unhappy staff members. Now, if you have a lot of chairs in your business um, and plenty of room for growth, uh, then I would, I would scatter everyone's schedule, make sure that they have two non-busy days and three busy days and just scatter it that way. So some people work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Some people work Sunday, Monday, uh, and then have Tuesday, Wednesday off, then work Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So that's how I would do it. I would just scatter it around. I also found that uh, making sure that your staff isn't working long hours throughout the day. So a lot of my staff won't work over eight hours in one day. Friday's is a little bit different for us because we need to keep the doors open the entire time. And we have some staff that work the 10 hour day or nine hour day. But for the most part, uh, I try to keep them at an eight hour work day just so you don't get burnt out. So uh, that would be my, my opinion on that answer. I hope that that helps. But I think the big goal is to make sure that if you're a small salon, you don't need to be open that many days a week because you're not gonna hire that many staff members. Uh, if you're a bigger salon, you have a little bit more room to move schedules around and play with it, then, then I say go for it. I don't think there's anything wrong with being open seven days a week. It just has to fit your business model. So hope that that helps. Moving on to the next one here. Duke of Noise, our friend. Uh, <laughs> I said that yesterday too. Christina was like, our friend. Uh, our friend Duke of Noise is uh, a pal of Splitting Hairs, free salon education, she's been uh, around for a while. She asked a simple question, metal or punk? So, Thad, what do you think? Metal or punk? I was gonna metal before punk, so. All right. I, so, I, I did things a little bad, because a lot of people go punk then to metal. Thad's going metal, uh, I'm going punk. Uh, metal's a little too much for me. Uh, and as I get older, I find myself listening to talk radio pretty much all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but yes, I'm definitely, uh, and more like, uh, I'm more of a, punk like uh from the green day blink 182 newfound glory that kind of 
that was my uh, my time period in that. I never pretended to go back and love everything uh, and all that. I listen to punk when I need to relax. Right. <laughs> Dad listens to punk when he wants to relax. All right. Michelle Brisson asks, uh, this is cool, all of our faves, um, how to make money on YouTube on your YouTube videos. So here is the, the challenge I think a lot of people get into. I think a lot of people, there are people that make money on just creating video content and posting it on YouTube and getting a lot of views. Now you have to look at, you get paid about 10 cents per thousand views on YouTube. So. Uh, a lot of people that start making videos thinking that it's going to blow up, even if you get 500,000 views, you're not really making any money. You can't pay your rent on that. So, um, and, and really, now that YouTube has opened up a platform to where you don't have to have commercials and all that, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, financially YouTube works. Now, I never built a business model on I'm going to make money off of YouTube. That's, that's not how it works. I mean, we get almost a million views a month on YouTube and there's not really much money. Uh, it, it allows enough to pay for uh, staff to sit at a podcast and have a good time, but it's not a lot of money guys. So don't plan on making money off of your YouTube video necessarily. How you make money on YouTube is you build a company, you build a brand. Uh, and whether that brand is yourself, I know a lot of people that build it just uh, look at Guy Tang for instance. Um, but then there's also people that build a company like I did uh, with Free Salon Education and my team uh, involved in that. So you, you have to decide where you want to go with it. If you build a brand in yourself, you're going to find yourself making money in other ways like uh, speaking at events. If you build up a big enough following, you're going to have companies that will sponsor and pay for you to come in and speak to their audience because, I mean, the reality of the business now, guys, is that we have the power as hairdressers or just human beings in general to build an audience of our own. No one tells us now that you can't do something. Uh, you can go out and do it yourself. So as soon as you have an audience, which takes a lot of work, a lot of time, um, a lot of people are uh, like free salon education didn't happen uh, quickly. You know, it, it happened with creating video content constantly. Um, and just that was the main focus. Keep putting stuff out there uh, and you will you know, you'll find yourself growing it within the industry. Now it's going to be a lot harder because there's a lot more people out there that are creating video content. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's definitely a more saturated market. So, you know, if you're going to do it, I would jump in quick uh, and get on the YouTube kind of thing or Instagram or whatever, but build that audience and you'll find yourself getting jobs and uh, getting different offers and you can really name your price at that point depending on the, the value that you bring to the company that wants to hire you. So that would be my advice there. You could also use it as if you're in a booth rental situation or a suite rental uh, situation to advertise. Get some point of view uh, haircuts out there, tag them uh, as New Hope, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we've talked about from a local standpoint, and that's what Dad's bringing up. Uh, like, so if you want to use YouTube to help grow yourself, the challenge with that is, and I think Thad can attest to this, we get a lot of views on YouTube, but it hasn't really transferred into a lot of clientele. You know, but what it does do, uh, and what I love about it, is it does build a better reputation for us within the town. So I think the town knows that we create video content. I think it makes our salon interesting and different, and I think it makes a lot of people want to be involved in it. So with that being said, I think it drives clientele that way. I don't think uh, people that are watching our YouTube videos, we have had some, and, and I have some clients that you know drive three hours to get their hair done, but that's very f uh, few and far between. So just uh, create content, make a stir in your town. I mean, that's gonna go to uh, one of the next questions, which is, you know, they have, uh, it's from, I'm, I'm guessing Sienna, I'm not sure, HS, Sienna, we're gonna make it up. You guys will see it on the screen. You can make it up. Uh, sparking people's interest for a new salon. I am in the process of opening a new salon, but I'm looking for new ways to get people's attention and interest. I feel like mailers are a waste of money and, it, uh, and time and a thing of the past, along with newspapers uh, and things of that nature. I have a few things I am working on putting into place, but was wondering if you had any suggestions. Thanks a million. So, 
My suggestion with this uh, is yes, newspapers are a thing of the past. Yes, I don't know if mailers are necessarily a thing of the past for me. Um, I don't think it should be your game plan to send out mailers, but people do check their mail still. So you have to put that in perspective. I don't think it's super expensive to do mailers. Um, but if I was a new salon in town, I would start pumping up the mailers for sure. Uh, and then I would start uh, doing Facebook advertising and that stuff. We've talked about it in past episodes, so I don't wanna get too far into it because I'm gonna sound like the Facebook ad guy every week, but really you can target your entire town just like the mailers. So I would hit them with the mailers for, for the mail and I would hit them with um, the Facebook ads and direct them towards people in your town in that demographic that you're looking for. <clears throat> now, uh, with that being said, uh, it, it's all about brand exposure. So you're building a new business, you're in a new town, uh, it's not like you're coming from something bringing a clientele with you. So if, if that's the case, you need people to, to know your brand. I, if you look at the way people market nowadays, you still see companies mailing stuff to your house. The reason for that is they're, they're, you're putting an imprint in their brain. So if you get a mailer, uh, and you put a mailer and you start sending that out to people's houses, whether they throw it away or not, they're seeing it as they're throwing it away. So it is worth the investment, but invest maybe 10%, 20% of your budget into that. I wouldn't go crazy with it. And then focus on the Facebook ad targeting uh, and even Instagram, uh, YouTube, all of those things, uh, video Facebook ads. Uh, target those towards people in your town, and I think you'll see a lot more growth from that. Um, all right, a couple more. We have a twofer from Royal Beauty. So I'm gonna, I wanna get through these questions because she's actually asked these quite a few times uh, and I haven't gotten to it yet. So here's, here's our twofer from Royal Beauty 28. Yay, okay. I guess she was excited about asking a question. Uh, okay, what extra services does your salon give that keep guests from going to Betty down the street? Example, snacks, wine, gift bag. I'm gonna tell you right now, Royal Beauty, that, um, <laughs> yeah, Betty doesn't exist in this town. Uh, so Betty, so let's talk about Betty for a second because um, I've never, even thought about another salon in this town, really. I mean, we've seen them open, we give two glances of them. I do watch them on, online a little bit, but I don't think anybody uh, in this town really holds a candle to anything that we're doing. I mean, and I think that that's why we've seen all this growth. We have the YouTube channel, we're doing something different. We offer wine and beer and, uh, and we create an experience. We have a cool team that is very open to you know, being nice to people like that. We, we create I, the biggest complaint I hear about salons in this town because they come in here and they get their hair done is that, um, that they don't feel that they're getting their money worth money's worth that they, uh, they're complaining about the hair, uh, to be honest. And, um, what would you say? Another one is that like, just like our, like general like atmosphere. Like, like yeah, just the atmosphere. Like, like right. People, Talk to people, like people, like we're not stuffy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you go onto salongratitude.com and you read the reviews of our salon, every single review has to do with the atmosphere of the salon. It really has nothing to do, like, let's just put it this way, it has nothing to do with beer and wine, has nothing to do, it does have to do with us doing better hair than them, I, I believe, because we have studied and made sure that we are doing better hair than them in this town, but really it wouldn't matter if we were doing better hair if the atmosphere wasn't there. So we create an atmosphere that people like to be in and, and we truly want them to be a part of the business as well. Um, everybody that walks in, no one walks in here as a walk-in and somebody goes, oh my God, I, I just do not want to take them right now. Like that doesn't happen. We don't look at our customers like that. So that's changed. Uh, you know, the image of, of the business. Even if they walk in and we can't take them, we figure out when we can take them and we try to accommodate them. So, you know, it's, you have to look at every single customer that walks in that door is really five or six customers. And that's how I've always looked at it. So if one person's walking in and you give them a bad, uh, uh, the, the atmosphere is bad and you treat them bad, they're gonna walk out and tell five people. 
and those five people aren't going to come to you either. If you wow them, you bring them in, you cut their hair, even though you were busy and you do a lot of different things, they're going to go tell five people about you. So that could be five customers there. So it, it's never just one person that you're dealing with. Even if, they, even if they're a huge asshole and they're the worst customer ever, you cannot treat them bad because they do have friends that aren't. And you want to make sure that you're not treating people in a bad way, in an unfair way, and so that you keep growing your business. What do you think, Dad? Okay. Second question, forgot about that. Any advice for a stylist who wants to create a YouTube page that won't be typical? Everyone seems to go the same route. So, I think, and Royal Beauty's got some good questions, so I think, here's the thing. YouTube channels are typical because YouTube is a platform and everybody's using it the same way. Um, I, I, do th I think everybody kind of has their own twist on it. I mean, I feel like if you look at all the YouTube channels and you think they're typical and you think that they're all the same, then, then figure out what you do that is different than everybody else and do that. Um, I, I'm guilty of, I watch a lot of different people and I become a lot of those other people. Uh, and that's something that I try to work, I'm trying to work on because um, I study people so hard, uh, I, I learn every little aspect of what they do and then I move on to the next person that, uh, that sometimes I become that person. Like I, in my mind, I, uh, I've just been watching, I watch them for hours and hours and that's something that now I'm trying to not watch anybody uh, even when I see a YouTube video come through, I'm like, all right, just don't watch it. Just who cares? I don't care what anybody else is doing. Just do your thing. And that makes you, you know, authentic in that way. So um, I would say from all I can give you is what I think in my opinion. And that is um, don't watch everyone else. Do your thing on YouTube. Who cares if it's like somebody else? If you thought of it and you and it works in your mind and it's, and it's who you really are, do that. And I think you'll find yourself making an authentic thing. Um, but YouTube's a cool platform and, and I think those people that are doing it right now didn't think about it. They just went out and did it. Moral, moral of the story, if you don't want pumpkin spice, don't wear pumpkin spice. <laughs> right, exactly. Package. What do we got? Hey. hey. Uh, yep, okay, cool. Sweet. Thanks. What is it, Pad? Anything FSC good? FSE crew. You want to open it? FSE crew? Yeah. Sweet. Open it up. Oh, it's Joey Jones. I know what this is. It's coffee. Coffee from Joey Jones? Yeah. What does that mean? Joey Jones uh, brews coffee. Joey Jones brews coffee. He's a hobby. He's, he's a hairstylist who follows us. And All right. He hit me up and said, would you guys like some coffee? All right, Joey Jones. There's a there too. Look at, oh, it smells delicious. I don't even drink coffee and this is... All right, so Joey Jones Coffee, where do we get this at? Um, I don't know if he's, he didn't say anything about coffee. Minnesota? It, it definitely looks like he's uh, It looks marketing. legit. Yeah, yeah, it looks like he's marketing it, so. All right, well, we'll open this in a little bit. I don't know if I have time. Because everybody's gonna be here and then clients are gonna be here. All right, let's get it open, whatever. Joey Jones, this is his spot. Yeah, right? This is what happens when you send something <laughs> to, during the show. If, if, if you are able to ship something and manage to get it to uh, show up. Hello, your name is awesome. Just a little something to keep you guys going. Thank you so much for all you do, Joey Jones. At Joey Jones, I think it's Y-O. Yeah, at, at Joey Jones, yo. Oh, at Joey Jones, yo. So check him out on Instagram, thank you for this delicious smelling coffee. All right. Now, last question. With so many hairdressing groups on social media, how do you keep people engaged? I focus on local events and education and share business building tips, but often I feel the content gets lost in the noise of the internet. This is Hair Love Design on Instagram. So, I completely agree with you. The, the, uh, hairdressing world at this point is very oversaturated with groups. The great thing about groups is it allows people, uh, let's say on Facebook or whatever, to have um, a voice. And, and I think that that's something that's hard for them to get. If you look at uh, hairdressing groups like HEF uh, or the Free Salon Education Group, there's the Hair Education Group Forum, 
Um, there's hair cutters only. There's a ton of different groups out there. Um, now here's the problem. Everyone's just throwing up on the internet. And that's where I find uh, it to be very difficult because uh, you have to bring value to something. Everybody wants to throw up whatever they're doing uh, and, and try to get famous from it. The reason that free salon education has worked and so many other people have worked uh, in the industry and really built bigger followings is because uh, it wasn't just throwing up and, let's, and, and saying, hey, let's get famous on this. It was how do we bring value to hairdressers and how can we give hairdressers more? And that was the basis of the company. It was never, I want to sell scissors uh, online, so now I'm going to make videos. That's not how it worked. It worked as we started creating content for no reason. To bring value to hairdressers was really the reason. Then from that, found ourselves in a relationship with Mizutani Scissors and different companies, and then the brand kind of evolved from there. So. What I'm saying is the hairdressing groups, the problem with them right now is that anybody can post anything they want and sometimes they're posting junk that no one wants to see. Uh, so I would just say the only way we're gonna make these groups better, which we're really not unless we can control them better, but uh, the way to make them better is think about the content that you're posting. Who is it for? Is it for just you to get gratification for what you're doing or are you trying to bring value to that group? Um, when you look at free salon education group, are you asking a question? Um, are you posting actual education or are you just throwing something up there for a pat on the back? You know, and, and there's nothing wrong with throwing something up for a pat on the back. I've done it a million times, but you have to make sure that the value is in your head first, bring value to the group or to the, um, to, even if you're posting on YouTube, bring value to that. Look at your audience that you're trying to attract. Um, and, and go with it there. Uh, and that should help with that. Now, if you're looking for local events and education, and if that's your group and that's your focus, I think um, then you need to just control that entire group if it's yours uh, and make sure that you're only posting and allowing people because you can, you can stop people. You can not open it to everyone to be able to post. And you can go through, maybe you do your research find education events and create uh, different events on the group page so people can find them or allow people to post but you have to approve it and only approve education events and I think you'll find that that could because um, I think that would bring a lot of value to hairdressers if they could go onto a group page and know that that group is solely focused and only posting education then I think you'd be good to go so that is the episode dad does it feel all right Feel good? Feel Justin's here. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the show. Make sure to post your questions using the hashtag TheMattBeckShow on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, we'll be back next week with more uh, conversation. So you can also post your comments below on YouTube and Facebook, wherever you're watching this video. And please share it with your friends all over the internet because we're trying to grow this thing. So just please share, share, share. And uh, we'll see you next week right here on the show. Thanks.